It is well with my soul. Uh, the man who wrote that, his name was Horatio Stafford. And uh, everything that, that uh, Travis was saying was true, but when he got back to the States, um, he went back to his church and the church thought he was demon possessed because of all the trouble that he went through. And so they kicked him out of the church. What? Can you imagine that? And so he became a missionary, him and his wife, in Jerusalem. And that song that we sang, Because He Lived, was written by uh, Bill and Gloria Gaither in the late 60s when the Vietnam War was going on and, and everything. There was so much turmoil in this country, riots and everything. And his wife was pregnant with uh, their son. And, and they thought, man, what a horrible world to bring this child into. And he wrote that song, Because He Lives, I Could Face Tomorrow. Uh, I know who holds the future. And so we could say that, you know, uh, because he lives, uh, we could face tomorrow. This morning what I want to talk about is spiritual warfare. Um, and I want us to look at Ephesians 6, chapter 10. The book of Ephesians is a very instructive book on how to overcome and be strong in the Lord. The Bible, it even says that in Ephesians, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and talks about who we are in Christ in the earlier chapters and uh, actually the first chapter tells us our purpose and why we're created. And, and we come to the, the sixth chapter and Paul writes this letter and he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against all the craftiness of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand, uh, that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having the breastplate of righteousness, having your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with prayer and supplications in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for the saints. Lord, we come to you this morning, and these are very familiar passages that we've read, we've studied, we've memorized. But Lord, I, I just pray that this morning you would make us aware of the, the, the seriousness of this battle and the gravity of it, Lord. That we would understand that there is a war going on and that we would be able to fight it and have victory in Jesus' name. Amen. The whole of Ephesians is to declare God's plan, who you are, who you can become. But now toward the end, the truth is at hand that we must be aware that there's a war and you're in it. Amen. We have to ask ourselves, why do we even want to fight? You know, there's a lot of Christians who are just very passive. I remember back during the Vietnam War, there was, there was people who were passive and they didn't want to be in the war. And I didn't want to be in the war and I was in the war. And so they, they didn't want anything to do with war. And, and today you have Christians who are very passive. They, they want to do everything to avoid uh, the fight. And so we ask the question, why do we even want to fight? 
It would do us no good to edu educate ourselves on the battle if we see no reason for the fight. In other words, we could, we could know the scriptures backwards and forwards but, and, and know all about the battle, but until we really start fighting the battle, that's what makes the difference. War is very controversial today in the physical realm, and sometimes those attitudes and beliefs uh, transfer over to the spiritual. However, in the spiritual realm, there's a battle going on. And I, I want you to think about that because a lot of times we, we, don't, we, we don't think about the war that's going on because we live in the natural. But I, I've come, when I first got saved, I, I found out that the unseen was more real than the seen. And it's the things that are going on in the unseen realm that affects the things that we're living in in the natural. Matter of fact, in the book of Revelations, it, it talks about when everything is said and done, it's going to be revealed that the devil was behind all the world systems. Yep. Right. And so... You know, we, 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 are, we so are geared to believe in the natural realm and, and, and just live by the natural realm. But there, there is a war going on. And there's a battle going on. Regardless of our opinion, we are either victims or victors. And Jesus had co come to conquer and the war has already been won in heaven. Even if we deny that we have an enemy, even if we deny that we have an enemy, it doesn't matter because he still wants to kill you. When I was in Vietnam, there, there was, Vietnam's a very beautiful country. I mean, it's just undeveloped it's it's just wooded there's rivers there's waterfalls and and you know we used to fly over to an island and and low level in the rivers and it was just beautiful and there was days that you would you would just you would just get so caught up in nature that you forget that you were in a war and if 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 a vietnamese had an opportunity they would kill you in a heartbeat because it's your enemy. Even if we deny that we have an enemy, it doesn't matter because he still wants to kill you. You know, um, somebody the other day, I, I heard somebody interviewing, the, um, what's the lady who's the, the Department of Justice in our nation? If I know her name? Loretta yeah, Loretta Lynch. They were interviewing her and they asked her what about ISIS and how she would contain them. You know what her answer was? We need to just show them more love and compassion. I said, what? <laughs> These are people that want to destroy you, cut your head off, you know? And it doesn't matter how much you show love and compassion for them, they still want to hurt you. And so denying it, denying that we have an enemy, denying that there's a spiritual war going on, it, it doesn't matter because the, the, the enemy's still after you. And he still wants to destroy you. One of the, one of the first, first verses I memorized was John 10.10. 10. Anybody know what that is? That's, that's the second part, right? The thief. Who's the thief? He, he has come to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he's come to do. And, and that was happening in my life. He was stealing, he was robbing me, and he wanted to kill me. So the devil is unmerciful. Everything that God is merciful and all loving and, 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 you know, all forgiving, but the devil is, is uh, you know, he's not merciful and he's not loving. 
His purpose is, is to destroy you. So we must understand as spiritual people that there's a real devil who wants to do whatever it takes to keep you from God and his plan and keep you from advancing in your spiritual life. Spiritual warfare is real even if we deny its existence. Many of Satan's victims do not even know that there's a war going on and they become easy prey. Christians should know that they're in the midst of a great spiritual struggle. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the second part of that verse, Mark said it. Jesus said, I come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. We have to realize, church, that there's a war going on. And the devil wants to destroy people. Even if you're not saved, the devil wants to destroy people. He, he wants to get them to a place where they never, uh, you know, where they, they, you know, their lives are so messed up and destroyed, you know, that uh, he can bring them into a place, even if it, it brings them to a place of destruction physically. And we have to realize that the devil will use everything he can in this world to destroy people's lives. In spiritual warfare, you have the same hazards as natural warfare. There will be casualties. There will be those who get wounded in battle. There will be those who become prisoners of war. They're brought into captivity by the enemy. And there will be those who are MIA, missing in action. They just don't show up anymore. They're missing in action. And there will be those who fought the enemy but lost the battle and their lives. And I think that kind of fits Rommel's situation. He fought, he fought, but he lost the battle. And all of us fight battles, and, and we win some, and, and we lose some. But the devil, like I said, is unmerciful. And he'll do anything he can to destroy people. So we can't all agree that spiritual warfare is real. How many agree that spiritual warfare is real? It's real. It's real. And, and these are the verses when I was over at the hospital and, and praying and, and that's the verse that I had was that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers. And, and if you're not aware of the devil trying to use things to destroy you, you're going to be easy prey for him. That's why it says, put on some of the armor of God. How much? All of it. All of it. That you may be able to stand against some of the tricks of the devil. All of the tricks of the devil. All of the tricks of the devil. Put on the, the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. Why? Because you need it to stand against all the tricks and the craftiness of the devil. Yeah. He will use deception. One thing we learned uh, Thursday night at our Bible study that the, the problem with deception is very deceiving. He will use deception. He will get you to go after things that seem to be good for you. In Genesis 3.1 it says, 
Now the serpent was more craftier than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, See, the devil will always turn the truth of God around. He'll use a little scripture uh, to maybe justify something that you're doing. And he'll say, Look, Eve, has God really said this? And you shall not eat. He said, Yea, has God said you shall not eat of the tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, You may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of this tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God said you shall not eat of it. And you know what was amazing in our study Thursday night is that he said probably in the garden there was more than 2,500 different fruit trees. And they could have ate of any one of the trees in the garden but that one. And, and God has put so many fruit trees in our life, so many good fruit trees in our life, but he says, I don't want you to eat of that one. But what do we do? We go straight for the one he told us not to eat of. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. See, she was turn he was turning the truth around. And, and you know, sometimes when we want to do something that is desirable to our flesh, and, and the devil is in the midst of all that, turning the truth around, we can justify anything that we want to do, even though we know it. the Bible said it's sin. Right. We could justify it and, listen, use scriptures to do it. Right. Say amen or oh me. Amen. And the devil said, you're not, you sh you shall not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good from evil. See, the devil was trying to misrepresent God, saying, well, God's really trying to withhold something from you. You know, you need to really experience this thing and God's trying to withhold something from you. I've been dealing with a couple who, a man who was unfaithful to his partner and, and he said, I had this opportunity and I couldn't pass it up because I didn't want to miss out. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye and the tree to be desired to make one wise. See, these are all good things. They all seem to be really good. Desire to make one wise and, and it was pleasant and, and, and it, it appealed to the flesh. She, she took, who, who was behind the temptation? It was the old crafty devil. Somebody said, well, I don't believe in the devil. And Smith Wigglesworth said, well, if you were resisting long enough, you would. <laughs> so she took of the fruit, therefore, and did he eat of it. Verse 12 says, Ephesians 6, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness. You know, I, I, I know this. I know this and I know this and I know this. Because 
be, before I was saved, my drive, you know, it, it was in, back in the 60s and everybody was leaving the eight hour day because they wanted to find, there was doctors leaving professional positions and becoming hippies and they were trying to find real meaning in life. And, and my drive back then was trying to find the spiritual realm because I knew the natural realm, you know, wasn't all there was. So I, I was searching for something unseen. And so I got into drugs and I got into the occult and, and found out that that, 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 uh, that spiritual realm was very real. I had wizards living in our house. I had all kinds of occult people. There, there was things happening, supernatural things. There was furniture shaking around. And I witnessed supernatural things happening right before my eyes. And it came to the place where the devil had me so confused that I wanted to commit suicide because I couldn't figure out how to get from Alabama to St. Louis. He wanted to kill me. Amen. He wanted to destroy me. Amen. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. You have to understand that the things we battle in the natural originate in the spiritual. The devil can use a bad relationship to trip you up. He could use your, your worldly friends to bring you down. <clears throat> You know, the devil uses people just like God uses people. And he could send somebody along your path to, to, to convince you to go down the wrong way and to mess you up. That's why you need to be around godly people and that's why you need to be around uh, in the church. The devil can use people to bring disunity in the church. I've seen that happen. It only takes one or two people that, you know, the devil gets the ear of and, and starts, you know, spreading stuff and pretty soon it just spreads like wildfire and brings disunity in the church. We have to be discerning people. And, and God gives us as Christians, as, 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 as believers, we can discern what is the devil. Or, or if, and sometimes see when the devil is using something maybe to, to cause us to, to get off the track. The Bible says in Hebrews 5.14, but strong meat belongs to them that are of a full age, even those by whom reason we of, of having their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So we have to discern. We, we can't go by what the world's saying is good and what the world's saying is evil, but we have to discern that according to God's word and the spirit of God. Amen. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, be sober. Why do you have to be sober? Because if you're all clouded up, you're not going to be able to recognize the enemy trying to destroy your life. So you have to be sober. It, it says, be, be vigilant. Why? Why? Why do you have to be sober and vigilant? Gonna see what's coming, be able to because your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion looking for somebody that he can devour. Oh, right. That's 
That's why you have to be sober. That's why you have to be vigilant. You can't fall asleep spiritually. You have to be wide awake. You have to be understand what the devil's trying to do and use people to destroy you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, your enemy, walks about as a roaring lion looking for somebody to devour. Yes, he does. And I want to tell you, he doesn't just work on Sundays. He works Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right. looking, for, <coughs> <coughs> looking for the right situation to bring you down. <coughs> Listen to this. He can't make you do anything. The devil can't make you do anything. He could only present you with a, a deception or a temptation. With the goal of influencing you to make a bad choice. You know, you can't, you can't say, well, the devil made me do it. No. He could, he could bring up a temptation and, and, and influence you. Just like David, you know, David looked upon Bathsheba and, and you know, and, and then pretty soon he was making plans how to, how to fall. So the devil can't make you do anything. He can only present a deception or a temptation with the goal of influencing you to make a bad choice. The responsibility rests solely upon you. He knows he knows how to jerk the chains of your desires. First Corinthians 10, 13. Well, why am I saying that this morning? Why, why am I talking about spiritual warfare after losing a dear brother? Because the devil tripped him up. caused him to make a bad choice. I love Romel, and if I would have known, I think I would have confronted him. The reason I'm, I'm bringing this message today because I don't want to see anybody else tripped up like this. Amen. Hallelujah. I've been in doing this for 22 years, ministering in this community. And I know I probably buried at least, at least 10 or 15 people from, from drugs at young ages. The last one I done was Zoe. How old was she? 17. 17. We've got a problem in this community. Yes. Amen. We got a problem, yes. and, and we can't bury our heads in the sand. That's right. And you know the reason why. The reason why our church. You know, is dealing with this right now is because we've invited people with addictions to come here. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Because we want to help them. You know, I think. I think I was thinking about foster care, how hard that would be because you, you invite these kids to come live in your house and you, they might live there for two or three years and you get so attached to them and then all of a sudden they get pulled away. It was kind of the same thing with us. You know, we invite people to, who have addictions and, and problems and hurts, habits and hangups and we invite them into our church in and, and hoping that they'll be healed and set free and, and go on to live and fulfill God's plan in their life. But sometimes we have some, some victories and sometimes we have some defeats. Are we going to keep fighting? We're going to keep fighting. Praise the Lord. Matter of fact, I've got a plan to go even further. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not backing down. We're moving Amen. forward. We're not backing down. And, and we're going to help be a 
solution to the problem. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. About time. First Corinthians 10, 13 says, There has no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But with the temptation, also make a way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. James 1, 14 says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. So the devil knows there's no temptation taking you, but such is common in man, and, and he, he uses whatever desires or weakness, he, he preys upon those things to bring forth sin and then to bring forth death. That's why you have to be sober and vigilant. You say, is he just after the Christian? No, he's, he wants to destroy any human life. Why do you think we're killing babies in this country today? It's because the devil got his way. You look in the Old Testament, that's what they did to, when they offered sacrifices to Moloch. They, they offered babies. So how do we fight the war? Well, when I was, prior to going over to Vietnam, they gave us training on what not to do when you're going over to that country. We're told not to go out of the base camp alone because it was a guerrilla type of warfare. You didn't know who your enemy was. Uh, and I remember that because, you know, you, you could just be walking along, maybe in a village or something, and, and I had a young boy, he was about six, probably eight years old, he came up and cut me with a box knife. So you didn't know who your enemy was. You know, it, it was, it was uh, you know, it was guerrilla warfare. And today, you don't know who the devil might be using to try and trip you up. So the same is true in spiritual warfare. You, you don't want to go out your, by yourself. You don't want to fight this battle alone. You, you always want to be hooked up to a church or to, to people that can support you and love you and, and help be discerning on how to help you fulfill God's plan in your life. Because the devil wants to destroy you. Don't put yourself in a position that your enemy would have a clear shot at you. You have to always have cover. You know, we had foxholes and we had bunkers. We had places to, to be covered in, in safe places. The same goes in spiritual warfare. You don't give the devil a clear shot at you. The Bible says, make no provisions for the flesh. Proverbs says, can a man hold fire to his chest and not be burnt? Can a, can a man hold fire to his chest and not be burnt? And the Bible says to stay away from all appearance of evil. I'm going to tell you how to win every battle. Stay out of the ring. Don't get in the ring where the devil's at because he'll clean your clock every time. <coughs> Don't make provisions for the flesh. If you have struggle with pornography, you don't go to the computer. Amen. Thank you, Brother Paul. 
if you're having trouble with alcohol, you, you, you don't go by the bars and hang out. Amen. If you're having trouble with drugs, you don't visit the old friends that used to be your providers. Because you're, you're giving the devil a clear shot at you. If you have trouble with food, you don't go to the buffet. That's right. <laughs> you don't buffet your body. That's right. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, it says, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons, why, why do you have weapons? I mean, are they to hang on the wall and... They're the right, they're to fight. They're, they're to fight with. We, we, God wouldn't have gave us weapons if we didn't need them. For the, for the weapons of our warfare. We're, we're in a warfare. Everybody say this, I'm in a battle. I'm in a battle. For the weapons of a warfare are not natural. They're not natural. You, you can't defeat the powers of darkness in the natural. For the weapons of our warfare are not natural, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Casting down imaginations. Hallelujah. I mean, when the devil starts flooding your mind with all kinds of junk and garbage and lies, you, you have to cast them down in the name of Jesus. That's right. <coughs> Casting down imaginations and, <clears throat> and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Any, anything that it tries to uh, raise itself up, up above God's word, you have to cast it down. Amen. Against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. You know, I heard somebody say, well, you can't uh, keep a bird, or you can keep a bird from, you can't keep a bird from landing on your head, but you can keep him from building a nest in your hair. Hallelujah. And sometimes you can't keep thoughts from coming into your mind, but you can keep those thoughts from uh, building up in your mind and building a nest in your mind. Amen. Impure thoughts and and all kinds of things, you have to cast them down. Let's go back to Ephesians uh, 6, 13 through 18, and then I'll close with this. Wherefore, take on, say it with me, church, the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Now listen to this, because I've read these verses so many times but I didn't, I didn't really realize how much there is to do here, because it's 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 a very, uh, it's a battle that we're in, and so there's a lot of things we have to do to to win these battles. It says, "Take on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all." In other words, he's going to list a bunch of things here, but you have to do all of it. Having done all to stand, stand, therefore. Praise God. Even if you've done everything that you know to do, you've prayed, you've fasted, you, you confessed, you, you rebuked the devil, just keep standing. Because the devil hates resistance, and the more you resist him, the more you fight, the more you stand, he's going to give up. But if you keep making room for, her, room for him and providing for him, he, he knows that it, it's just a matter of time before he'll bring you into captivity. Right. 
Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having your blessed plate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Man, when the devil comes to you and starts presenting all kinds of lies and, and, and telling you that, that you're never going to overcome, you come back to him and say, devil, in the name of Jesus Christ and by the blood of the Lamb, I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. And you fight him with the word of God and you come back and resist him and claim the ground that God wants to give you. Hallelujah. Stand firm, resist, and go forward. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. <clears throat> taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all all there, there is nothing more powerful than God's word Amen. it will quench all every addiction every habit every hurt it will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked Take on the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And you think that would be enough? Hey, man, that's a lot to do, the helmet of salvation, the righteousness, and all this, man. And, but it's not enough. It's, it's praying always with prayer and supplications in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all the saints. So we have to do all this, plus we have to continue to pray and to watch. And not let the devil get a stronghold in our lives. I, I'm not the, the judge or the jury. I, I don't understand everything that happens in this life. I wish I did. I wish I could tell you why things happen, but I don't. And, and we've had other tragedies happen in this church, and, and God brought us through. But I, I, I as I was praying, I, I had, I mean, I had my Labor Day message. I worked on Friday, I had PowerPoints, and I, I had it, all, had it all together, and it was an awesome Labor Day message. But it's sitting on my desk right now <laughs> because I really felt the Lord wanted me to speak this. And, and, I, and I want you to, this morning, is to understand that we're in a battle. I want you to understand that we have weapons to fight that battle. Yes, we do. And you don't have to let the devil destroy your life. Yeah. I'm glad that somebody came and shared the gospel with me, how God had set him free. And if I would have let the devil take me out, I don't know if, if Hope Church would be around or not, you know? Eh, probably would be. Yes. <laughs> God's got a plan. But see, that's the thing. God wants to do so much with you. Hallelujah. And the devil wants to destroy you. But Jesus came to give you life. Amen. And give it to you more abundantly. Praise be unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I, I wanted to share that with you this morning. And, and I want you to continue to pray for Amy yes, and her family. Uh, she's going through a very rough time. She's going to need every one of us uh, to help support her. And, you know, Romel has touched a lot of our lives. Amen. And uh, he, he was a friend, yes. and I loved him dearly. Um, but he lost the battle. He was in a fight. He lost the battle. 
and I don't want to see anybody else lose a battle Amen. in our community. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, first off, I want to thank you for Romel. He was just a great man, and I, I loved him, and he gripped our hearts <coughs> with his smile and his friendship and his caring spirit. But Lord, I, I just pray for our community and the people in our church here, God and all the churches, that we would come to the realization that we are in a war, that there's a real enemy that wants to destroy mankind, wants to destroy your people, God. And Lord, I thank you for Ephesians chapter 6, that you gave us ways to destroy and to discern uh, and come against and have victory over the powers of darkness. You didn't put us in a war and just say, well, just do whatever you can. No, you equipped us to fight and to win and to have victory. So Lord, I, I, I just ask that this day would be a marker, a milestone, a, a day that we could say from this day forward, we're gonna destroy the works of the devil. And we're not going to let the devil win anymore Hallelujah. over our lives or over the lives of our loved ones and the people in this community, God. Lord, we, we come against the powers of darkness that are, are, are infiltrating our community with drugs and, and things that will destroy people's life, Lord. We pray that those, those people who are dealing these things and and, and those people who are involved in making this stuff available would be caught. And most of all, God, that you would bring them to repentance and salvation. And Father, we pray a mighty revival amongst those who are addicted, God, that, uh, that people would be getting saved and, and, and the, the whole atmosphere of, of the drug culture in St. Genevieve would be changed by the power of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We come against those lying spirits and, and those deceptions <clears throat> that would draw people into these addictions. In Jesus' name, amen. Great.